Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am showing you how to design a custom shadow box paper art on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So last spring, I designed a garden themed shadow box and I shared it freely with everybody over on my blog. It turned out to be a really popular project. Shadow boxes are totally a thing and I've seen so many variations on shadow box themes in my Facebook group over the last six months. I get so many questions on how to make them, but here's the awesome thing. You can design your own custom shadow box with just the images and the theme that you want. Yes, you really can. So for this project, all you really need is several sheets of 12 by 12 white cardstock and some spacers such as 3D Zots or strips of foam core. Now you can fancy it up by putting your shadow box in a display frame and even light it up from behind with LED lights as I have. But most importantly, you need a shadow box design. You are welcome to use my garden shadow box, of course. You'll find it on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash garden shadow box. But I think you'd really like to design your own, wouldn't you? So let's talk about how you can design your own shadow box by starting with some basics. A shadow box works by stacking many layers of cardstock on top of each other, with each layer having a different element cut out from the center, usually the center, of the cardstock. Then when you shine a light from behind the layers of cardstock, the light comes through the layers in varying degrees of brightness, creating a lovely 3D effect with depth and beauty, just like these. The secret to creating a beautiful custom shadow box is always to have three things, a focal point, frames, and a background. So a shadow box's focal point, usually at the center, is the element that you want to really stand out. It's often a silhouette of a person, an animal or a character or a building or something else meaningful and personal. This focal point isn't likely to be very large, but the eye will be drawn to it. For the best results, your focal point should be clearly defined and without any other layers touching it or overlapping it. A shadow box's frames are the elements that you'll have at the edges, top, sides, and bottom. Often things like trees, flowers, and other less important buildings and animals and shapes, or really just anything that goes with the theme and helps draw the eye to the focal point. And a shadow box's background is what appears behind the focal point and frames everything. It can be as simple as plain as an uncut piece of cardstock like in this one, or you can add extra layers behind that piece of cardstock to get more depth, such as a sun, moon, stars, or even a reflection. Now if we look closely at the shadow box that I designed, the focal point is the people on the swing the frames are the foliage and trees and flowers around it, and the background is the sun. Now it's also important to understand shadow box layers in their order. Here's the order for a shadow box from front to back. First we have the frame layers, and then there's, there's usually at least two of these layers. Uh, you can have more to give you more depth. Then the focal point layer comes after the top frame layers, and then the background layer is at the back behind the layers. And sometimes you can even put extra frames behind the focal point, as I've done here, and this can help give it a lot more depth and create more of that 3D effect. The simplest shadow box design, and the one that I recommend that you begin with if you're new to making shadow boxes, is simply two layers with a single focal point and a solid uncut background layer. From there, you can introduce more elements and more layers. Just be sure to keep that central focal point nice and clear. You can design shadow boxes in many different ways. I usually design them in Illustrator, and I know lots of other people who like to use Inkscape, which is an open source free program. But those, both of those programs have a learning curve. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make the, your shadow box simply in Cricut Design Space. All you have to do is use shapes or upload your own images. But what works really well is to use Cricut Access. Now, if you're not familiar with Cricut Access, this is a subscription program from Cricut that allows you to access over 100,000 images. You can search and use the images in Cricut Design Space, which makes it really 
perfect for designing shadow boxes. You can find pretty much everything that you need to design shadow boxes in Cricut Access. I have a Cricut Access subscription and I will be using it to create the shadow boxes in this tutorial. We're gonna make these two together. I highly recommend Access. Oh, and if you just got your Cricut, you get a free month of Cricut Access. This is a great time to experiment with it. So to help you design your custom shadow box successfully, I've created five different template sets in five sizes ranging from eight inches to nine inches to fit the most available, commercially available shadow box frames. Each template set also has a box pattern with it so you can make designs without having to buy the wood shadow box display frames too. You can also use this box pattern to just keep your design nice and neat and tidy inside your, dis your display frame. All right, I think we're ready to get my free templates and then head on over to Cricut Design Space so I can show you how to make a custom shadow box design. We're gonna make two, a simple one and a more complicated one. To get the free templates for this project, head on over to jennifermaker.com. I keep all of my free designs in my library. If you don't yet have a password to my free library, just go to the red bar at the top of the jennifermaker.com and click on get a password. If you have your password, click on enter the library. Once you're inside the library, you can browse through all of my files, but the fastest way to find the file for this project is to search the page. I recommend you search on custom shadow box. Once you find it, click on the file to download it, and then be sure you open it and unzip it. And here it is. And there are the five different sizes of my template for you to use. Your next step is optional and it's to measure your shadow box display frame. Now, if you're using a shadow box display frame for your project, turn your display frame over, take off the back, remove the spacer inside if there is one and measure the inside of the display frame. This is the size you want your finished shadow box design to be. For example, for the display frame I'm using, its inside dimension is nine inches. Step three, upload one of my templates to Cricut Design Space. You can cut a custom shadow box with a good craft knife, but it's tedious and it requires that you have some. Now don't forget, design software updates and changes over time. If anything about what I'm about to show you in the design software seems outdated or different than what you see on your screen, I've likely already discovered this and made updates for you. You can always check by opening a new window and going to jennifermaker.com slash updates. Videos are sorted by date. If there have been any updates to how the design software I show in this video works for this particular project, or if there have been any changes in how you do it, it will be listed here. All right, so you wanna head on over to Cricut Design Space and click on new project over on the left. And then you wanna click on upload, upload image and browse and you need to go find the files that you downloaded and pick the right one for your size uh, shadow box frame, right? So I measured nine inches, so that means I want the shadow box paper art nine file. The, the number there stands for the inside dimensions. Of course, you can resize these things to whatever size you want, but I've already got them sized for you now. So we're gonna go ahead and upload the nine inch size template. This is what it looks like. You click on save, and once it's uploaded, you select it, and then you click insert images. There we go. So let me explain how this works, because there's a lot of layers here. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight layers. So these are various templates that you can use to create a shadow box. You may not need all of them, but it's a great starting point. You can get rid of the ones that you don't want. You can duplicate ones that you need extra of. Let's ungroup this so that we can see what layers we have here. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. So this layer here with the dashed lines and the one that's underneath also with dashed lines, this one right here. This is a box pattern that I created so that if you don't have a display frame, you can create a frame out of paper or cardstock, I should say. So you may or may not wanna use this, it's up to you. So we'll just set this off to the side because we don't need that for our tutorial right now. All right, what remains are the frames and the focal point and the background layers. 
So these ones here on top, these are all your frames. So I'm going to spread these out so you can see them. You'll note that I made them a little bit smaller. You know, each one is a little smaller to sort of guide you into the right size because you want your elements to come in from the outside towards your focal point. So there are four of those. And then this is uh, a background and I colored it blue to remind you that you can use copy paper instead of cardstock if you would like. But you can also use just plain old cardstock, which is this one right here. So essentially we have, um, so I would consider these three to be our frames, this to be our focal point layer, and these to be our background layers. So what I'd like to do is make a really simple shadow box so you can see exactly how it works. So for our very simple shadow box, all we need are two frame layers. So we'll just use uh, the top, we'll use these two and get rid of this one. One focal point layer, which will be this one, and just one background layer. So we'll get rid of this one. So two frames, which are going to be these two, one focal point, and one background. So let's begin by finding a focal point image. Click on image right over here on the left and type in something simple like dog. I just press return on my keyboard and we see lots and lots of dog images. Now we're looking for something mostly solid, definitely all connected, all of its pieces have to connect and a silhouette would be best. Silhouettes really do work the best for shadow boxes. A lot of these can become silhouettes, but there probably is already a silhouette of a dog in here. So I'm gonna just keep looking. And in fact, I you actually can, there's a cartridge. Click on cartridge and type in silhouette. There's actually a whole bunch of cartridges that are just silhouette images. Dog silhouettes. Let's open up this. So there's lots of dog silhouettes. None of these are quite right though. Let's search for puppy. Uh, let's go back to images. Aha, this is the one I wanna use. Now, I also wanna make a note of these images here. So I have Cricut Access and I, any image that I can use as part of Cricut Access has this green icon. See up here at the top? If it has this green icon, that means it's a part of Cricut Access and I'm not gonna pay extra for it. On the other hand, there are some images that aren't a part of Cricut Access. And if it's not, first of all, the icon is missing, like in the case of this Scotty, I think it's a Scotty, and there's a price, okay? And if you don't have Cricut Access, you'll see just the prices. You can always go over to Filter and look for free images, um, but, for if you're making a shadow box, Cricut Access is pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and click on this puppy and click insert images. All right, so here is our puppy. Now let's zoom in. And we're going to go down to our focal point layer, which is this one here in the middle. And we're gonna get in close so we can see better. So here is the layer itself and there's a square cut out of it. And here's our dog floating in the middle, right? It's our focal point and it's good to put it in the middle of the frame. And to move this, you just click and hold and drag and you can move it. And you can use this icon right here in the lower right corner to resize it. This is just a little big right now. So we're gonna resize him just like this. My dog is, I'd say, about 25% of the height of the template. Now to make sure your focal point image is centered perfectly in the frame, you can select both of these objects and go up to Align and do Align uh, or Center Horizontally, just like this. And now it's perfectly centered. Now we're not done with this layer. The dog is just floating in space, unconnected to the sides of the frame at all. Anything you put in a layer must be connected to the sides of a frame or it will not work properly. So let's give this dog a floor to sit on. Click on Shapes and click the square and it's gonna probably show up up here. I know the shapes always seem to show up at the top. So we're just gonna drag this down and I'm gonna 
put this right under his bottom, just like this. I'm going to click the unlock icon in the lower left corner, and then I'm going to click on the resize icon and click and drag it over so it overlaps the two sides and bottom of the frame, just like this. There we go. So now I have a dog that's sitting on the floor of my focal point layer. And all we need to do now is select all of these, everything in this, this one layer right here. So that's the, a rectangle and the puppy and the frame itself. And then we're going to choose or click on weld down here at the bottom. And there we go. We have a puppy sitting on the floor or the bed because you know how puppies are. So this is our focal point layer and it's ready to go. But we need to make our two frame layers still. So let's go up to where our frame layers are. And by the way, if you're wondering, yes, I do tend to start with my focal point layer. I find it easier to know where that's going to be before I make the frames around it. So now we need to make our two frame layers. First, I am going to move my focal point layer up so that I can see my frame layers. And then I'm going to send it to the back. So you go to Arrange, Send to Back. So now my puppy's in the back, just like it will be, and my frame is in the front. And I think I'm going to frame it with a heart. So I'm going to click on Shapes and choose Heart right here. And here's a heart. Now, I want to center this over my puppy and resize it right here, just like that. Now, of course, you'll notice right away that we really can't see whether it's centered or not. Now, of course, we can use our align tools, but we can't see the top and bottom. We can't see where the puppy is inside of our heart. So if you go up to the line type menu and change it from cut to draw, it becomes uh, see-through temporarily so that we can position it correctly. So I want it to center it over the dog just like this. In fact, it could be just a little bit smaller. Just like this. There we go. And let's just make sure that it is centered on the layer itself. So we're going to go to align and center horizontally. There we go. So there is my heart and here is my uh, frame for my, you know, one of my frames. Now, again, they're not connected. But we want the heart shape, instead of it being part of the frame, we want to like remove it, right? So what we're going to do, we need to make this frame a solid instead of an, like a, you know, an outline. So we're going to select just this layer. We can tell over here on the right that it's just one layer. And then we're going to go to contour and we can hide the center cutout by clicking on it just like this. And now it's one big layer. And now we're going to slice the heart out of the center of this layer. So we select the heart and that layer. It's important to remember that to slice, you must select only two layers. If you have three or more layers, you can't slice. And click slice. And then we have to delete the extra copies in the center that always get sliced out. And there we go. Now we have a heart around our puppy. See? Now let's do the same thing with this one over here. Let's move this over and this one's going to be a layer above. So they're going to be higher up layers. So let's arrange it so that it's in the front. Now we want to uh, again click on shapes and click heart. And there's our heart again. We're going to want to make this see through so we can see it. Click on um, line type and choose draw. And then we want to center it perfectly over the other heart to make a nice image, just like this. That looks pretty good. You can make it a little bigger if you want. These layers are very important for creating the 3D shadow box effect. You could, of course, have multiple layers here, but we're going to keep this one really simple. And so this looks good. So we want to do the same thing that we did before. So we're going to select that layer and then we're going to click on contour and we're going to take out the center cutout and then close it. And then we're going to select both the heart and the layer and choose slice. And then we're going to get rid of the extra in the middle and voila, 
We now have a really simple and awesome shadow box design. Just double check that everything looks good. We have our top layer, our second layer. We have, this is will be our back layer. This will go in the very back. So we'll send this to the back, arrange, send to back. Just like this, oops, arrange, send to back, there we go. And let's see, what else do we have here? We have our box. Let's make it a little smaller. Then we have this. This is the extra optional uh, frame, sort of like the box that goes around it if you don't have a display frame or you just want to use it. For now, I will hide this so that we just have our four layers. Make this bigger again. And I always like to double check that my layers look good before I cut. So we've got our top layer with a heart, our second layer with a smaller heart, our third focal point layer with our puppy, and our fourth background layer. That is a solid piece of cardstock. And we're good to go. We're gonna click make it. And the maker will separate them into the formats. And we go ahead and click continue. Once you've connected to your Cricut, you'll want to choose the best material setting. Now, I recommend that you cut your shadow box on 65 pound white cardstock. So click on browse all materials. And I like to use medium cardstock. And I set my pressure to more. You may have settings that work better for you. Feel free to use whatever works best for you. Now let's cut this out. All right, step five, cut out your shadow box layers. Once you're good to go, load up a blue or green cutting mat with your 12 by 12 white 65 pound cardstock, insert it into your Cricut, and cut it with your fine point blade. Now, if you have any issues cutting, be sure to check out my Cricut Cutting Problems Guide with tips for cleaner cuts. You'll find it at jennifermaker.com slash blade tips. Step six, put spacers between your cut layers. It's essential that there be a little bit of space between your layers of cardstock or you won't get the cool shadow effect. You can put space between the layers by using something like 3D Zots, adhesive foam squares, weather stripping, or strips of foam core or signboard. If you have many layers, you'll want to use more shallow spacers like Zots or adhesive foam squares to avoid making your design too deep and unable to fit in a shadow box display frame. For this one, I'm just using an old signboard that I had and I simply uh, use my craft knife to cut it into strips and I'm putting the strips around the edges of each layer and I'm simply taping them in place. Step seven, frame your design. You can frame your custom shadow box design in two ways. Either put it in a store-bought frame or I guess when you make yourself or use the box pattern in my template to make a frame from cardstock. To use a display frame, just flip your frame over, take off the back, and set your custom shadow box inside face down. If you measured properly, it should fit perfectly. Step eight, and this is completely optional, add LED lights. If you put your custom shadow box design in a display frame, you can add LED lights to the back to light it up and see all of those layers and shadows so much better. I prefer to use LED light strips, but some people just use fairy lights. Either way, they go behind your layers of cardstock. I usually put my LED light strips around the edge of my frame for a nice even glow. You'll want to position the lights so your cord can hang out one corner at the bottom. If necessary, cut a small notch in the corner of the frame for the cord to hang out. Now just replace the back of your display frame, plug in your light, turn it on, and enjoy the magic. Doesn't this look amazing? It's so cool. Okay, let me show you how to design a more intricate shadow box with more layers. Let's bring in our template again. So I'm just going to go back to upload, and it's already right here. I'm just going to put that onto our canvas. And here are all of our layers. Now let's separate them out again for what we want. I'll make my screen a little smaller and ungroup everything. Now again, we can take the box pattern and sort of set that over to the side. And that leaves us with all of our lovely templates for our shadow box. 
separate everything out. Okay, so for this design, I would like to have four layers, four frame layers. So there's one, two, make sure we get these in the right order, three, four. They go from smallest to largest because we're going in from the edges towards the center. And one focal point layer, so I want to make a copy of this one, so I'm going to right click on it and choose duplicate. I'll put that right down here. And then move this one out of the way too. And then we're going to have two background layers. So um, there'll be this solid one, but then there'll be another one that has a, uh, like a, to give extra dimension to the back. And you will see how this works. It's very cool. All right, so that looks good. I don't think we need this one, so we'll delete that one. Move this one out of the way. Okay, so this is our plan. Now, of course, what you, what, which ones you use are going to depend on your design. You might start with something, add more layers as you go, but I know what I want to make, so we're going to start right here. Now, again, I like to always start with my focal point, and I want to make a nature scene because it's, it's winter, and I love wintry, snowy forests. I'm going to search Cricut Access for reindeer. So I'm going to click on images and I'm just going to type in reindeer up in the search box and look for something that looks good. Maybe a reindeer family or something like that. Like here we go. Here's reindeer family. Here's a dad and a baby and a mom. I don't like that mom though. Um, I like this mom better. Let's see. So I'm going to add this one and this one because we can use parts of designs. That's what's cool about this. So let's drag these down to our focal point layer. And then I'm gonna zoom back in there so we can see these better. So um, yeah, so I like this dad and this baby, but this baby's in a weird spot. And I like this mom. Okay, so we're gonna use contour. So we're gonna to get rid of the parts that we don't want. So we're just gonna select the layer and click on contour. And then we can get rid of, what I'm gonna do is hide everything and then just add back in what I want. That's easiest. Um, no, let's see. Show all contours, hide all contours. I want the mom. Let's click on the dad. So we should just have the mom layer, okay. Now in this one, I'm gonna click contour again and make this smaller so we can see what we're doing. And I want, to get rid of the mom and that little bit there. Okay, but it, now I want the dad and the baby, but I want the baby to be a little different. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And basically I, I would like to put the mom, the baby, and the dad all like on the same plane, right? So I'm gonna duplicate this. And in one layer, I'm going to get rid of the baby like that. And then in my duplicate layer, I'm gonna get rid of the dad. And now I have separated everything out into dad and baby and mom. See, isn't that awesome? So this is going to be my focal point, a reindeer family. And so what I want to do is go ahead and select all three and we're going to weld them together. And they're a little bit big, so let's make them smaller. Be something like this. And I want them to be centered on my frame. So I'm gonna select everything and click align and center horizontally. Now they need something to stand on, just like our puppy. So I'm gonna give them some uh, grass. One thing I do wanna do is make sure I make a copy of these guys because we're going to do something special with them in a little bit. It's always good to have a copy of your uh, elements in case you need to do anything extra with them. I find I find, like to keep just like a little, just extra copies of everything over on the side and then I get rid of it later. All right, so they need some like grass or something to stand on. So let's go back to images and search for grass. Let's see here, so there's lots of grass images in Access. I like this one here, I'm gonna click Insert Images. 
and again it shows up at the top always if ever you can't find your image that's pretty much where it's going to be and too big let's re I'm going to make it smaller to resize it there we go okay so let's go back so we can see everything um, so there's their grass we want to make sure that our layers are overlapping here so that everything is connected it's very important that all of our elements be connected so let's duplicate this grass and connect it to the edges just like this and if you want you can even kind of like you know give it a little extra shape there so they're kind of like maybe on a little hill or next to a lake which is what I am hoping to do okay so that looks great let's make a copy of this grass in case we need it again later just set it off to the side here so we could fill all of this in so I could just click shapes and um, get a square and unlock it and then drag it across and we could weld all of this together to create one layer which looks great so we have a dad and a mom and a baby on a nice hill but I would really want them to be by a lake because I have a cool idea to make a reflection so we need to cut out a kind of lake shape here and for now I'm just going to go to shapes and click on circle and make an oval it's not perhaps ideal but you know we can always do some fancy fancy things with it later so kind of like this there is our lake right here and then we're going to slice it out of the layer so I'm going to select both the oval and layer, just the two layers. Remember when you want to do a slice and then click slice. And there we go. All right. So there's our family in front of a odd looking lake. Perhaps not quite ideal, but I'm sure we could do something else with that. And this is our focal point. And that is unless we want to finesse it a little bit more, it's ready to go. So now we need to create our frames. And I, since I wanted to place this family in a winter forest, we need trees. So let's go to images. And I'm going to search on tree silhouette. Actually, let's go to the cartridges and search on tree. Because I know there's a, yep, here's tree silhouettes. And those are all in access. So I want to use let's see here I would like to use this one and also this one and something else tall and thin I want lots of tree trunks so it looks like they're in a forest let's insert those and they all go up here so let's kind of move them down here where we're keeping our other images and let's see if there's anything else let's search for tree and see what else comes up. Lots of pine trees, but... Ah, so this one looks really cool. This is already has a frame around it, and it's got the tree branches and the little grass. Let's try this one. I'm gonna insert this in here. In here. This one would be excellent as our top frame layer, and I can just literally just reposition it and then click and drag the resize handle to create an amazing top layer for our frame. So normally, you know, when we don't get quite so lucky, but this one is ready to go and I think it will be excellent. I'm going to make a copy of this a duplicate because I always like to have the extra copy down here and put it down here. But otherwise, this top frame layer looks good. Let's go ahead and select all both of those layers and click weld. There we go. Cool. So this is our top frame layer. Now I want to add some trees um, at the edges. So let's get our, our focal point to make sure that we're paying attention to where it is. So uh, it's right in, right in the center and nothing is overlapping it. So we're good right now. So this is going to be a layer that we're going to add some more trees to it. So let's this tree and I'm going to bring it up here and we're going to resize it and it's pretty big 
let's see. I mostly want tree trunks with a little bit of foliage. Something like that. <clears throat> Oops, we need to um, get some more space here because that tree is very large. Let's move all of our images off to the side and bring this down here so we can work with it. So I'm positioning a tree where I want it to fall in my frame, even though it's clearly too big for it. But that's okay because we're going to weld and slice and everything and it's going to be just fine. So uh, bigger still, I think something more like this. Okay, and then I'm going to make another copy of it and I'm going to flip it. So like a mirror image, so I'm going to go to flip and do flip horizontal. Then I'm going to position it over on the other side something like this. That looks pretty good, right? I like this. So let's, uh, I mean, we could also make this one a little bit smaller so it doesn't look like exactly the same tree. Or we could even just flip it back and put it right here and then it definitely looks different. I like that. Okay. Now let's make sure that our top layer and our focal point still look good. Select everything and send it to the back so that it's not in our way. And then we select these two layers and we put them on top. This tree needs to come over a bit more like this. All right, there we go. So we have a frame and two trees that are way too big for the frame. So what I recommend that you do is slice them in advance. So let's just select the two trees and we're going to click uh, weld. We're going to put them together right now and we need to get, we need to trim them down. They're just, they're too uh, big for this frame. So I'm going to click on shape and I'm going to click square and I'm just going to trim off the fat here. So unlock, slide and get all of this stuff that's up here so that we just have this little bit here that overlaps the frame. And we're going to slice this uh, box and the two trees and then we can get rid of all the extra. Just click and delete, click and delete. Now, so now we have the top cut off and we do the same thing for the sides now. Uh, so there's a square over here. Let's make that a little bigger. And so we select the tree layer and the square and we do slice. We can kind of just select everything right here and there we go. One more time, click shapes, click square. So you see what I'm doing is I'm using the shapes from Cricut Access to create new shapes. So we're going to slice this too and then we can get rid of all of that. And now our trees fit in our frame, so we can select our trees and our frame and click Weld. Excellent, now we have our second layer. Let's make sure everything still looks good. And it does. We can always center everything to arrange, align, sorry, align, center. That looks pretty awesome already. Let's do uh, another layer of trees. Let's see, we'll use this one and duplicate it. And we're going to put them under this layer here. So I'm going to move this over so we have space. And I want these trees to be nice tall trunks, but I want to see them too. And it's, the foliage can't be too low though. So maybe something like this. And we'll duplicate that and put it on the other side as well. Uh, let's see, flip horizontal. All right, so let's move everything to the back. And then we're going to select these layers and put them on top to see what we think about the placement. So it's close, but not quite. So we're going to adjust it while we can see it. Too close to the deer. So let's make sure that foliage is up high enough. I don't want it to look too much like the other one. All right, that looks good. You can always click unlock and then you can get different shapes, right? Because it kind of elongates it and you can do something like that so that 
it doesn't just look the same all the time. Of course, you can't, uh, you have to have a little bit more space to work than I'm giving it. There, that's fine. Okay, so let's move these two layers off. This layer and this layer, and then our focal point layer. And so we have the same situation again. We have the trees that are too big for the layer, so we do the same thing. We select our two trees, and we weld them together. And then we click on Shapes, and we click Square, and we're going to uh, drag our square so that it's covering everything that we don't want, just like this. Now we're going to slice these two layers, and there we go. Awesome. And now we're going to select both of the, the tree layer and the frame and do weld. And send it to the back, and then put it in our stack to make sure it still looks good. So you see how I'm doing this? I'm just building layers and I'm using the elements from Cricut Access to basically make whatever I want. And I'm bringing each subsequent layer in closer to the focal point as I go. And that's creating depth. It's gonna be easier to see when we're actually all done, but you can see, you can see the layers right now. And then we have one more layer. Let's bring this over here and I'm gonna use these trees for this layer. And I want to make some like tall trees in the background on the, the hill that they're standing on. And I want them to reflect in their pond, which is this oval that's in front of them. So I'm gonna duplicate this so we have trees on either side. Maybe something like this. He's gotta be careful not to be too close to the deer. All right, let's move all of these things to the back and then take these and do a line center and let's put them on top and see how that looks. Okay, so not the right position, so that's fine. Maybe a little smaller than that then so we can actually see the trees. Actually, I think we need to make them skinnier. So let's unlock it. Now we can drag it and make it kind of skinnier like this. Okay, that'll be fine. And we can make it, there we go. All right, so same thing over here. Unlock it and put in some trunks. They don't have to be the same. I like that. That definitely is giving depth, um, but doesn't have to be that tall. So let's see if we can kind of shrink it a bit so it fits and we're going to just flip them over. So this is what we got, very evenly spaced. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's nature, right? I mean, it's not like trees are evenly spaced. I'm gonna click this one and right click it and choose duplicate. And then I'm gonna flip it vertical like this and create the reflection. Same thing over here. I'm going to duplicate it and flip it vertical and position it right underneath. Okay, so let's see how that is looking with our design. Let's align everything again and put it on top. So the trees need to be higher, okay. So let's bring them right up. In fact, let's just have them touching. Let's move everything to the back, arrange there. That's pretty good, except the ones on the right are not like it's that doesn't look right. We need to move those over. Let's just select both of these. Select this one and this one and move them over like this. There we go. That looks better. And the trees are reflecting in the water. Okay, cool. Awesome. So let's make these just a little bit shorter. They don't have to be so long. Whoops, we have to unlock that. So let's unlock that and make them shorter so they all fit. And same for this one, unlock it and make it shorter so it fits. Now we weld everything here. And let's change it white so it all matches and send it to the back 
and put our design on top. And that looks pretty awesome to me. Now, since I want this to be a reflection, I think um, I probably should have like a little bridge that matches the other bridge. I guess it doesn't matter, does it? It's not probably not that important, but maybe, maybe we'll put a little bridge here and we can just do that with shapes and um, to create lines, unlock it. And we're just gonna, it's gonna be really tiny. Just like, I think that we just need, like it's a lot of, I like to have all the things really well connected um, um, so that nothing is floating or fragile because it's not well connected to other things. We just gotta make sure that it lines up with the other one. And let's do another piece over here and rotate that one. Put that into place, arrange, send it back, there we go, and put this over. All right, so there we go, that looks awesome. So let's weld all that together and change it back to white. So select that and click white, there we go. Excellent, okay. So there are four layers in our focal point, which I think looks awesome. Now, I mentioned that I wanted these trees to be a reflection. And to do, to do a reflection, we want to actually cover them with a sheet of cardstock or better yet, something thinner like copy paper. So to do that, we're going to want just a piece of paper that's that size. So let's move everything off here. So here we're going to want a square and that we're going to just tape of it'll be a square of copy paper and we'll just tape it on. So we unlock that and we just size it out like this. Um, just like that. That would be a great size. So we'll just keep this black so we know it's the copy paper layer. All right, so we can set that off to the side. We'll cut that later. All right, so, and of course, since we have a pond and we have our trees reflecting, we need our mom and dad and baby being reflected in the water as well. So I made a copy of the deer earlier, which is exactly why we wanna have this, and the grass. So let's duplicate these again and bring them over here. And so we want to bring that grass up there a bit. And we're going to um, also extend the grass on either side. Duplicate like that. Because we want it to go across the whole way. You know, I don't know, maybe we don't need that. I don't think we even need the grass. Oh, we do, because we have to keep them all together, right? We have to attach them, so. But this grass is too thick, so let's unlock it. Make it a lot thinner. I know that's really small. Let's zoom in there so you can see what I'm doing. So I wanna make sure everything is overlapping. So we've got dad and baby and mom. Everything is overlapping there. Now let's weld this all together and we'll change it to white since I like to see everything in white, but you can do whatever you want. And we're gonna take all of these layers and we're gonna center everything and then we're gonna position our reflection of our deer as well as our trees. So rain center, just like this. Okay, so now we need a reflection. So we just flip it again. We go to flip, we do flip vertical. And if we put it right here and then do arrange send to back, we have an awesome reflection. Now, you'll note I haven't attached those deer to any layer and that's totally okay because we're, we can just cut that out and tape it behind our copy paper so that we have a more muted 
reflection of the deer and the trees. It'll work. It'll work the same way. So, is there anything missing? Let's see. What do we have? Our background. We need a background. So, I think probably a moon would be nice. So, um, let's. Uh, we'll use this one, and we'll just contour out the cutout. There we go, and send it to the back. Arrange, send to back. All right, so we have a great spot for our moon right here. So let's go to images, and we're gonna search for moon. Lots of moons, but again, we want a solid shape or something that we can turn into a solid shape with a weld and simple. We want it to look realistic. This is a pretty realistic scene. This one would be fine. There we go. So we'll just select that and click insert images and it's gigantic. So we're just going to resize it and position it where we want it to be. This is going to be so cool. Okay. So let's move our layers off top layer, our second layer, our third frame layer, and our fourth frame layer. And then we have our reflection layer and our deer reflection layer. I'm gonna move these over here. And that leaves our moon. Now the only other thing I think we wanna do is have more light coming through our lake. If we keep this just cardstock, behind our lake layer, we won't have a lot of light. It'll be dimmer. Maybe that's fine with you, but I think I'd like to have, make sure that this here is doesn't have any cardstock, the shape here. So what I'm gonna do is select both of these and just go ahead and weld, sorry, slice this out since I've got that moon in position. So I'm gonna click slice. All right, and then I want to remove a shape from the bottom of this background layer to allow extra light in to illuminate my lake so that we can see the reflection. If it's too dark, we won't be able to see it. So a shape like this probably would be just fine. Then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and move it over so it stays in the same position, the same plane. Here we go. And I'm gonna slice it out Awesome. And now this will be our, this will be our layer. There we go. Perfect. See, see how you can do this? This is cool. So now I just like before with a simple one, we wanna double check that everything looks good. So let's move these down here. So here is our top frame layer and our second frame layer with more trees and our third frame layer with even more trees and some deer, right? Oops, this is our third frame layer. There we go. So there we go, lots of trees, lots of tree trunks that is framing our focal point, which is, let's send that to the back, our two deer next to a lake. And we also have this layer, which is our reflection layer. That means we want to actually put it behind our focal point because in order to get a nice muted reflection, it's gotta be behind it. So we're gonna put this all the way in the back behind it. And um, our background layer with our moon behind our deer. Oh, and we can't forget our reflection that we'll be taping on separately. There we go, and then the final background that goes all the way in the back. Excellent, that looks great. This will be a piece of copy paper over our lake to diffuse the light, but not, but allow the reflections to be shown through. And then we're gonna cut out the box as well so that we can put it into a 
card stock box. This looks awesome. So we can click make it. So here are all of our mats. Let's just walk through and double check. Here's a box. Here's another layer to the box. Layers, which all look excellent. Nothing weird going on here. And then at the bottom is our piece of copy paper. All right, let's go ahead and make this. Here are all my cut pieces, and we're just going to stack them up in the order that we designed them. I'm going to use zots instead of foam strips so that you can see how the zots work, and also because we have a lot more layers than we did with the simple one. And the zots are, aren't as thick, and that allows us to get more layers in there and still fit them into our shadow box. So all the layers just go on here nice and straight. I like to put zots all the way around the edges in both corners and at the sides. And here it is all finished. Let's turn the light on so you can see. Isn't that so cool? You can see the reflection of the deer and the trees in the pond. And you can see the moon shining through the, um, the trees. It's so cool. I just love these shadow boxes and I love how easy they are to make once you know what to do. I cannot wait to see what you design. If you have any questions about how to design your own custom shadow box, please leave your question below this video, or even better, come ask in our awesome Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. We love to help. And don't forget, we have a Cricut giveaway going on right now. If you design your own shadow box, you can upload a photo of it and get bonus entries. Get all the details at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Giveaway. And that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back with a gorgeous starlight lantern that's gonna warm up your winter nights. Remember, I'm always open to your project ideas. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.